Hey, I'm Ashley Nappy from Lane Cove Dressage. Lane Cove Dressage is to help every horse and rider with their dressage journey. It's my goal to help inspire and educate you. Welcome to my channel. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Happy, and today I'm going to give you some valuable insight on how to navigate the horse shopping process. Now, when you start the horse shopping process, the first thing you're probably thinking about is what is your riding set, what are your goals, and what is your budget? And those, I think, are the first three questions that you really kind of have to ask yourself when you're sitting down and thinking about purchasing a horse. So if you're looking for a horse that's an athlete and that you're going to be competitive with, you're also going to have to think about what your budget is and you know how you're going to achieve those goals. This is a great example of a horse that is an athlete. She is competitive, but she also requires a higher skill set to ride than your average horse. One of the big considerations I want you to think about before you start this process is what kind of horse is suitable for me. If you're competitive and you want a big competitive horse with huge gates, are you athletic and fit enough to safely sit those gates? Or are you going to need a trainer to ride that horse a couple days a week and do you have it planned out in your budget for that horse to be in training? Likewise, if you know you're only five foot, you know, would it be more realistic for you to be on a pony? But like my personal pony is super spicy and really isn't an amateur friendly horse. You know, she's really hot. She she gets she gets going and she's extremely sensitive and likes the aids. If I accidentally touch her at all, she's trotting and that might frustrate an amateur owner. You know? Or be the type of person who really likes a flashy horse with lots of hair. So then are you going to be looking at an Iberian or a Frisian or something really pretty? You know, really think about what you want. The age of the horse, the sex of the horse, do you want a mare, do you want a gelding, and the training level of the horse. Also make sure you know what kind of vices the horse could have that you might be comfortable with. And I would highly recommend regardless of whether you're looking for a competitive horse or for just a pleasure horse, that you also work with a trainer in the horse shopping process. It's really important because trainers have a lot of experience and they usually have a good eye and they can really help you find the right horse that suits your needs. This is a great example of finding the correct horse that suits your needs. This is an 18 year old student and her seven-year-old paint mare. They do lower level dressage together and they are an appropriately matched pair. Another really important factor when you begin the horse shopping process is to kind of have a time frame and an expectation in some ways. I've met some people over the years just selling horses because I both buy and sell horses as well as help clients and customers find horses. And every once in a while I'll get a customer that has tried 20 some horses. And you really have to ask yourself, you know, with that customer, what is it they're specifically looking for or what is it they're not finding to go through 20 plus sale appointments on horses. One of the major considerations you're going to want to figure out if you are working with a trainer is who's going to handle filtering through the salads. I've had some situations with clients in the past where they kind of did the dirty work and they would filter through the salads at the end of the day and only send me the really relevant stuff of like, hey, can we go see this horse? And then they would pay me hourly as I took them to go see and try certain horses. There's also been situations where I've had clients pay me a finder fee just to go out and find them a particular horse. So it really kind of depends on what you would like to do and what you feel most comfortable with. This pony here is a great example of buying the right horse for the right rider. 
In terms of this pony is fancy, she has a phenomenal skill set. She is trained through third level dressage. However, she is easy to handle, she is safe, and she is not too much horsepower. I will be listing this pony for sale later this year, and she is an amateur's dream in terms of having a very great skill set, but also not being too full of herself to hurt you as a rider. Now let's imagine that you love the horse. The next step is to put a deposit on the horse so the horse is held for you. Now typically deposits are non-negotiable or non-refundable. And that means you're holding that horse until, so other buyers can't come and try to purchase the horse until you do the vetting or the pre-purchase exam. However, you should really have that in writing and you should have a clear understanding of how the deposit works for the particular situation. I've seen some deposits where they were refundable upon a bad vetting, but what do you call a bad vetting? I mean, is it just some x-rays you weren't comfortable with, but the one vet says they're sound, the other vet says they're not sound? You see how that can be a very tricky gray area? Definitely talk to your trainer or your coach and have that figured out ahead of time so that you know the plan when it's time to make a deposit. So after you pick out a horse and find a horse to go try that you think is suitable and appropriate, you're going to take your trainer with you and you're going to go to a sale appointment. And typically at a sale appointment, uh, first the owner rides the horse. Now if the owner doesn't ride the horse, I probably wouldn't get on the horse. You don't know how the horse is going to react, you don't know the training, the background, the history on that horse, so I definitely urge you to always watch the owner ride first. If you're looking at a really kind of low budget horse that you know might be off a sale website or Craigslist or something like that, definitely have someone get on because you never know if that horse is going to buck or pull and especially if the horse used to ride and maybe has been a pasture pup for a couple of years you're definitely going to be looking at you know is the horse safe type issues and you, you really want to be aware of that and stay safe now if the horse is experienced and in a regular program that's great that's awesome you're going to be looking at a good horse so then First the trainer rides, then your trainer will get on the horse and ride the horse. And then if they still think that and feel that this horse would be a good fit for you, then they put you as the owner up on the horse. Now if you're a re-rider or you're just getting back started and you're not comfortable going fast, say at the trot a lot or a lot of canter, I would highly recommend you know going on the lunge line and so you find your legs on that horse just so you can stay safe, because safety is always the priority and the goal. Also, along with that, is you need to negotiate. Now, usually trainers get really offended if you lowball, and I've seen a lot of crazy lowballs over the year. So for me, as someone who used to work in sales, I always try to make the other trainer talk first. So. If, for example, you know, I think the horse is worth a little bit less than what's represented, or maybe they have the horse overpriced, I won't go in and do something rude and say, hey, take 5k for this horse. I'm going to try to be more tactful and polite in the situation and say, hey, you know, I noticed you have this horse listed at second level, however, I didn't really see you demonstrate any second level work in the sale video or at the time of the sale appointment. You know, do you have video to show that the horse is at second level or if the horse is really only schooling, training three, first one, you know, are you willing to renegotiate the price? And a lot of times, you know, that'll help the seller see that you're serious and help tactfully negotiate that price down. The next step is to set up the pre-purchase exam. So you definitely want to hire your own vet for that exam. Uh, 
sometimes you know trainers will recommend you know the vets that they use or who's good in the area but really if you're not from around that area it's always good to use your own vet and um, also to have you know your trainer's feedback as well watching the exam to make sure that that is doing things correctly before you go to the pre-purchase exam also talk with your trainer and have a plan for x-rays you know are you planning on doing just deflections and a basic exam are you planning on doing x-rays you know those are big considerations and questions that you need to have planned out ahead of time because the seller's time is also really important and they also need to probably schedule their day and know whether they're doing x-rays or not and how long that exam is going to take. If your horse passes the PPE and you're still in love with the horse and sometimes with the PPE you'll ride the horse again, um, then it's time to do your final sale to the contract and take the horse home. I hope I helped answer your questions about the horse shopping process today. Feel free to message me if I can help with any other questions.